Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's CITI program webinar. Today's topic is Service Dogs in Science, Barriers to Inclusion, and is presented by Ms. Joey Ramp Adams. Joey Ramp Adams is a biocognitive neuroscientist and founder of Disability Access Firm, Empowered Ability Consulting Incorporated which advocates for disabled students and STEM industry professionals. Joey has been instrumental in enacting changes in the American Society of Microbiology and the American Chemical Society's laboratory safety guidelines to include inclusive guidelines for service dog handlers. Joey is a published author and a public speaker on service dog access to science laboratories and the vice president of International Alliance for Ability in Science, a nonprofit organization that provides scholarships to disabled st student scientists. As a service dog handler herself, her mission is to make the world university inclusive, one paw print at a time. So today our learning objectives would be to recognize people with disabilities are in the sciences, identify barriers for service dog handlers in science laboratories, identify biosafety levels and risks, understand policies, procedures, and risk assessments, and discuss solutions from barriers to inclusion, and the proportion of PhD recipients with disabilities in STEM fields is only 6.9%. Now, according to these reports, this suggests that relative to other demographics, students with disabilities are just less likely to pursue a graduate education in STEM after their post-secondary experience. Now, among the total 25 million employed scientists and engineers, less than 10% of them are people with disabilities. These rates are further suppressed when students hold intersecting marginalized identities, such as underrepresented races or ethnicities. Students with disabilities may just step out of STEM majors due to various barriers. Now, these barriers include a lack of STEM role models. Now, the number one reason, according to this report, is that disabled students feel unsupported by STEM faculty and administrators. Two of the biggest barriers for people with disabilities who rely on a service dog for their health and independence are service dog policies and guidelines with respect to laboratory coursework are either non-existent, unnecessarily complex, or very ambiguous. Now, this leaves a lot of room to the subjective nature of each university or faculty member. One of the largest hurdles for service dog handlers in science is the lack of specific, inclusive, and informed guidelines within these existing laws and policies, or just a lack of policy altogether, which we're going to dive into a little bit deeper in this webinar. And although a service dog is considered medical equipment and protected under federal law for public access, Many times the presence of the service dog itself will present the barrier for the handler based on implicit bias or an uninformed judgment by a lab manager or an administrator. And this is Basil. Basil and her handler worked very successfully in a BSL-3 lab environment, so it can be done. A service dog and handler can currently be safely accommodated in some BSL-3 environments. We have successfully assisted this student with a service dog maneuver the BSL-3 lab based on risk assessment. And that student went on to be a very successful professor in biology. I invite you to review our content offering regularly as we continually adding new courses and webinars in various areas of research ethics, compliance, and professional development throughout the year.